for joining us on Key Factors, presented by theraceguide.com.au, where we go deep into five big races at Royal Randwick this weekend, running our own mini races to try and find the winner for you. It's going to be a great day out there, Mike. Importantly, it's summer racing. We've got more fundraising for the bushfire appeal, and the ATC already in with $10,000 donated, as well as racing New South Wales. That's a great kickstart. Mate, welcome in. There's a few auction items as well. I know you love an auction. Huey Bowman's boots from Winx's Cox Plates first victory, or would it be the, the painting on the wall, mate? What are you going to go for? Very good question to start the show. A bit hot outside, isn't it, first? Which is not great for the fires out there in Sydney on a Thursday True. night, but great to hear the donations are still flowing in. Yeah. Auctions, absolutely love them. Close second to a cow cutter, I reckon. I do love those. I would love the boots. All right. The missus would love the oil painting which means I'll probably be bidding on the oil paintings too. Okay, well, we're going to need some money for that, Mike. It hasn't been a great start for us here on Key Factors for 2020. You mentioned a few morals last week. Have we got any more of those this week? I hoped you wouldn't mention that word. I've used that word twice oh, in the last two weeks, and both of those horses, Shara Terra and Word For Word, haven't placed. Yep. That is absolutely shocking for me. I promise the viewers at home, if I use the word moral again, the horse will win, I promise. I'll be watching out for that. And, Mike, with these tips, I mean, I didn't get on Twitter on Monday when you apparently tweeted our gold bracelet at $34, <laughs> thank you. So there are some, there is some good form in there. I promise to text you next time, mate. You've been on me all week for that one. <laughs> all right, well, let's get this race day started at Royal Randwick this weekend. Of course, the track conditions, Mike, has been hot, as you said. Any rain around? It is so hot outside. The forecast is changing. So hard for them to predict, predict this almost tropical weather, isn't it? Yeah. There could be a storm tonight. I hope there's a storm tonight to break this weather. There could be a storm tomorrow at the moment, rail true, good track, position around a fair bias, but watch out for some rain on Friday. Okay, and of course we've got a good race card, we've got the listed Carrington on later in the day, Mike. That's probably going to feature as the one of the day, but Mike, what about some others to play around in at Royal Ramwick on Saturday? It's almost a process of elimination, the key factor doesn't lend itself to two-year-old races, the highway races we're not really across, yep. and race nine, who knows what Superium's going to do? True. So four, five, sure. six, seven, eight, race eight, a benchmark 78. But it's almost a group level race, isn't it? Stu? It absolutely is. But it's keen to get the day started, Mike. 2,000 metres, race number four, as you said, and one of the quandaries of Sydney racing, Wallace Stayers. Do you wait for the money or do you go with the form? De Beer is the one that's got the money and it's also got the form. So will it be the De Beer? $2.80 favourite here. Matawi, $4.60. Obviously running on well last start. Mushareb there, $5. Can we trust him off that last start win? Now, here's some interesting ones. Fun fact, $5.50 and guys, both six runs deep into their preparation. And, of course, white boots. Well, this guy's tough as boots, $10. But, Mike, 2,000 metres to kickstart the day. De Beer favourite. Yeah, De Beer's a favourite. It's third up on Saturday. It was second up in the replay. We're going to start with De Beer, Matawi, Waller Horses, middle distances. They are so, so hard to beat. De Beer gets the inside run off a really strong tempo set by Mr Dependable. He gets out the inside. He runs on well. Matawi, though just off heels at the 350 metre mark. Such a key moment for him here. His last 200 metre section was actually faster than the four to the two, which is so rare. He gets a three kilogram turnaround mm. on a Saturday and he probably should have won, I reckon, Stu. Well, I might be a bit kind. No, I, I agree with you there, Mike. And look, to be honest, there's not too much between them, but there is a couple of bucks between them and the price this week. Definitely. De Beer, short price favourite. Don't quite get it, Stu. All right, well, there is De Beer just edging out Matawi. Let's have a look now. Well, well, as we do here on Key Factors a lot, let's take you back about 12 months, pretty much to the day. Ramwick, 26th of December last year. And we're looking at Roman Sun here, Mike. Importantly, third up, 2,000 metres Ramwick. And Tell you what, the winner this day, not too bad at all. Fierce Impact goes on to win a Group 1 2 rack. Well, yeah, the thing about this horse is that it was terrible last start on the Kenzo, but it's a big, long striding type. I don't think it got around the turn. Watch that replay again. First up at Randwick, very good. Last preparation, forgive it. So we're going back two preps ago with some great runs around here. He's got Fun Fact. Links through to Fun Facts form. I think the rate's about 87, 88 this run. If he produces this on Saturday, he will win, I think. All right, let's get this race started now, Mike. We're going to run our mini race, so keep your eyes on the top right-hand side of the screen. And as always, the form, we're looking for the gold bars along with the key factors. Yeah, very close in the form of Tawi Mushareb going well. De Beer gets the weight turnaround against him. That's why he doesn't get the gold bar despite winning. OK, so a little bit of ground to make up for the favourite De Beer. Key factors time, and the first one, as always, is progression. Yeah, he's big, he's strong, he's a gross type. 
Taipei can improve third up to be. It does have progression, though. OK, so all the favourites there on top. What about the distance here? 2,000 metres. Some big, big kickers coming away. Fun fact, back to, back to 2,000. White Boots just grinding away at 1,500. He's been crying out for 2,000. His form last prep was good. And Roman Sun should like it too. OK, so we've got a bit of a race on our hands here. Track conditions, we're obviously angling for the good track. Yeah, coming to Royal Ramick away from the Kenzo. He just didn't get around that tight turn with the camber. He will love the big track on Saturday, I hope. All right, well, Roman Sun has made it a four-way go here. And position in run, I see another one levelling up. Box seat sticks on like glue. He'll be hard to shake. White boots. All right, so we've got one, two, three, four, five horses hitting the line together there. And two of them only just a length in behind. Mike, this is a good race to start on, isn't it? 2,000 metres. We don't always jump into those early in the day. Let's have a look now, bring in all the ratings and, of course, the odds for a bet in race number four to kickstart our day. And we mentioned those two that were sneaking up in the odds there, Mike. They're the ones right behind. But Roman Sun and White Boots, they had the 2,000 metre Ramwick kickers. And I'll tell you what, you've got to be brave to back the beer here from what I'm seeing. Definitely 280 is too short for me. Matau each way, if you like it, don't, I'm not against him. Mushri, more, probably more a win bet, first yep. time to 2,000 metres. But there's two horses right there on the odds, big odds, $10, $23, Richard Freeman, back in Melia, great stable, third up, Roman Sun, we think he'll get backed on Saturday, he's the best bet for sure. All right, Roman Sun, so some nice odds to start things off at Royal Ramwick this weekend if you're having a play. The next race we're looking at is race number five and it's over the mile and well many of these we mould over, Mike, a lot of horses we know inside and out and there is one with a lot of X factor and that is Mooga 2, $3.10. And that is the one they want. $3.10 favourite. Tory Joy, $4.20. It's, it probably leads. It'll stick on. It'll run well. I cannot catch that horse as well. And another one I can't catch, Mike. Napoleon Solo, $4.20. They're right there. Man of Peace, one we found last time. We got the money at $17. It's about half that. This week at $7. And all too soon, $7.50. Ready to roll second up. It'll need some speed on, though. But Mooga 2, Mike, the punters, what are they going to do with this one? What are we going to do? Let's have a look at a trial, the second replay. <laughs> Let's start with Man of Peace. We can enjoy this replay, can't uh, we, Stu? Yes, it's we the can. only good winner we've found on Key Factors this year and the two shows we've done. Led all the way, CJ Graham dropped 22 points from country to city grade this day. Bar plates off two starts ago and was just too good. Napoleon Solo gets to the outside, runs on OK, gets a small weight turnaround, but I don't quite get him either, Stu. Why is he so short in the market? Oh, look, I tried to watch this replay over and over again, Mike, and the winner, I just thought, taking more ground off it at the end. Yeah, the last 100 metres solo is absolutely done. Can't have him on Saturday. OK, well, let's have a look at Mooga 2. We've only seen one trial in Australia, and you will see this horse, well, it was further back than this, but, Mike, it's going to get home very late. Doesn't win the trial, but it was obviously the one that was catching all the trial watches off. It's just so hard. Hard to read, isn't it? The form in Europe was good, but that was over 2,200 metres, 2,400 metres. The one thing you pick up from the European replays, though, he's a bit of a gross type, a bit of a muscular type with a decent turn of foot, which is so important coming to Australia. He's out the back here. He falls off the screen, so we can just keep talking. And he puts about five lengths on his stablemate R candidate, I think, in the last 150 metres. The horses around him are pretty good. Just don't know, Steve. What do you reckon? You're going to have to see if it measures up to Saturday Grey. I'll tell you one thing, Australian bloodstock, how many of them are they running around? It's a great it's a great syndication, obviously, and it could win on Saturday. All right, let's have a look now to get this race started. Race number five, it is over the mile. Let's see if Mooga 2 is going to be in our selections. And the four, Mike, well, that's obviously a hard one to line up. You've mentioned a bit of the overseas form. Yeah, if you're an analyst at home, we're trusting the handicappers at Racing South Wales. So we're putting it in the mix for form. Man of Peace, the only win in the race. Light him up. OK, well, there's Man of Peace, as we said, on it. Good odds last start. Here we go. Progression. And you, Mooga 2 straight away. Yeah, we just don't know how much upside he's got. First up for the new stable. The biggest kicker on this page, though, Valentino Ross. A terrible yeah, right. first up. Second up improved five lengths last preparation. Hugh Bowman on. Very sneaky. Soon. All right, that's what we like to see. A bit of value, but Mooga 2, the one they have to catch. What about this distance? Up to the mile. Tory Joy should like it better than 14. Man of Peace is OK compared to others. All too soon needs a strong tempo. And Valentino Rosso will like it as well. OK, so Man of Peace and Mooga 2 on top from a few others charging. Obviously the good track. Yeah, all fine, I think. OK, we're going to race through that one. And over the mile, Mike, who gets a position in run? I don't think Cathy's going to let CJ come across. Tory Joy should hold the lead, Stuart. OK, we're looking at that. Mooga 2 is levelled up by Tory Joy and Man of Peace. So pretty much looking at that, Mike, Napoleon Solo is the only favourite that didn't really appear in the mix there. So I don't highly like doubt it will appear <laughs> in the betting. Let's have a look Big now. Lane. Race number five. Royal Randwick this weekend. Mike, I mean, look, $3.10 Mooga 2. I don't know if I'll be taking that. Tory Joy, I said I can't catch this horse, but Man of Peace, 
Did so well for us last start, and we know where this horse is going to be in the yeah, run. Yeah, you don't know. I don't know. This is a really tough race, harder than the first one, even though it was close to the first race. At least we found some value. If it's a dry track, Man of Peace might be the one. But the rain does come on Friday. All yep. too soon, we'll get a big kicker. She's looking for a soft track. She's so one-paced. Let's go with Man of Peace on pace, hard to beat. And Valentino Rossa, that big kicker second up with Bowman on, he could do something as well on a dry track. All right, Man of Peace, let's try and get it two for two, two on Key Factors. There's a look at two races at Randwick this weekend. And stick around after the break. We've got three more races, including the listed Carrington, coming your way. Welcome back to Key Factors, presented by theraceguide.com.au. We've had a look at two races from Royal Ramwick this weekend, and the next we're going to have a look at is race number six. And, well, the dollars came for the red and white in the NRL after they signed Latrell Mitchell, and, of course, it's come again for the red, white and green. White Helga, $2.60 in from $4.40 for Lesbridge. Really well supported there. We've got Missy Bill. Well, we know where it's going to be. It'll be up front, $4.60. To your health with a bit of pumpkin pie form deep into its prep. We've got Celis there, $6.50. And, well, pumpkin pie, Mike, it always runs OK, but I tell you what, you've got to go back a couple of years to find its last win. Yeah, she's an honest mare. She's one of mine I like. Let's have a look at Helga and pumpkin pie and Celis in the same race last start. If Latrell Mitchell goes half as good as Helga, those Bunnies fans, Munzee, one of them, will be so, so happy. Jeez, it was a big, big go, wasn't it? She first Absolutely. up, she ran on really well from the back. Second up, the money came in, 450 to 250 on pace. Kicks on too good. Pumpkin pie, she sticks on really well over 1,500 minutes. I think she's ready for the mile. Celis loomed up alongside her. But I think the girl in yellow was a bit too strong late, or a bit stronger late, Stu. Yeah, look, it's always good to have, see a horse that you had a bit of a bet on on the day. That was a nice win to Helga. Obviously a great ride, really well positioned. And good margins too. In the run. That's what we want to see. Let's have a look now. We mentioned pumpkin pie. We'll take it back. Well, this is pretty much 12 months, isn't it? We've got Missy Beal in the race here too, Mike, and it, it obviously drops out. But pumpkin pie just shows over the mile this is a horse that really doesn't give up. Yeah, dry track, Ramix, 1,600 metres. She likes it. Missy Beal is three wide, no cover this day, so you can be forgiving. Yep, right, yeah. But her Ramix form is maybe not quite Good as Warwick Farm. She was so good last up. Maybe we should take a step back. This is a really, really high rating and fast time Randwick Mile. If she produces this on Saturday, I think she can win. But there's just so many seconds and thirds on her resume, aren't there, Stu? There are. There's a little doubt. A few doubts across a few in the race. But that's what the key factors are going to do. Hopefully sort it all out for us so we can find the winner. So let's get it started. Who's got the form and we're lighting up the gold? Yeah, a few in form. Helga, Missy Beal, Pumpkin Pile running well. The weight turnaround doesn't give Helga an edge. Right. But we, to the eye, it was a pretty good win though, wasn't it, Stu? It was. And that's why he's on top for form. Helga, Missy Beal, Pumpkin Pie as we get the key factors started. Who's got all the progression? Yeah, she's definitely got progression. There were margins there. She had them covered. Mountain breath and Hokkaido miss can improve into this preparation but maybe not enough. Okay pretty scary Helga's going forward with progression what about the distance? Mountain breath will like if the tempo's on but once again is it enough from the back? Okay Helga out in front from Missy Bill and Pumpkin Pie as we round the bend the good track. All good I think. Okay we're going to fly through that one and position in run over the mile who does this help? Yeah I'll get a bit, bit nerdy on you for a second when a horse <laughs> leads like, like Missy that. Bill and kicks for home early the horse in the box seat's often suited and Pumpkin Pie Gets that golden run on Saturday. All right, so two top Raiders there. We've got Helga that's absolutely flying. And, of course, Pumpkin Pie, you've mentioned a few things there, will be in the right spot. Not too much weight. But I'll tell you what, Mike, these are two that we've got on top. I oh, know we like a bit of value here on Key Factors, but I know you like Helga as well. Let's have a look here. We can't split them. That's pretty much what we're saying. Mate, Helga one last start. Pumpkin Pie two years ago. I'm pretty sure the edge pumpkin pie here. What are we doing? Yeah, the key fact is the way we bet says we bet pumpkin pie, <laughs> but you've got to give credit to what you just said. Missy Bill, a bit of a risk coming to Ramwick. Just want to see how she goes. She's pretty short in the market. It's between those top two, Helga and pumpkin pie. I'll make them both bets. All right. Hedge my bets, Helga and pumpkin pie. If the rain comes, pumpkin pie will like it as well. You can back them both, I think. All right, Helga the best and pumpkin pie there for value in race number six, which takes us to the listed Carrington Stakes over 1,400 metres. A little bit of autumn in the air here with so many of these coming back from Queensland after a hit-and-run mission, but it is Southern Lad well-supported, 380 into $2.50. That is the favourite. Too good near the pace there last time. John O'Shea's purple patch. It's going pretty well, Mike, but I know you've got some stats on that. Redouble, $6.50. Obviously running into some good form as well. 0, 0, 3 and 2 in the form, so we'll delve into that. 
Golwa, $6.50. Ready second up for the boys in blue. Sambro, $7. A long time since a win. Another one back from Queensland. We've got Passenger Time, $7.50. Nash should have him in the right spot. Sellerman, another good win at odds as well. And of course, Intuition drawing out wide in this race, Mike. But Southern Lad got the job done last start and $2.50. Short enough here. Yeah, let's have a look at the second replay. It was a big, big win. That's, win wasn't it? Let's look at the Magic yeah. Millions $1 million race. His poor horse have to step back for $150,000. $1,000 after coming <laughs> second and third. If you're the owners, I feel for you. Redouble. Obviously, this is his grand final. He threads through the pack. He runs on pretty well. Sambro, four wide, no cover the whole way. Gets to the outside, runs on hard, laid off a strong tempo. Both big runs, Stu. But can they back it up? It's going to be so hard for them, won't it? Oh, it is. And Redouble has just done this so many times. Oh, can we trust it? It's he back. Is another pumpkin pie, isn't it? He loves the place. <laughs> All right, well, Southern Lad, we saw the odds. $2.50. So let's have a look at the win last start. It was obviously very well positioned this say, just in behind the speed. Passenger time was on pace, though, Mike. But this was a big win. Tommy Mark won a great ride. Great to have him back in Australia. What else can we say here? Yeah, I wish I just closed my eyes and go off the ratings from this run and just back him hard on Saturday. But I can't. Mm. There's a few things going on here. Two starts ago, we had former Antonico. He's yep. a horse on the outside of the Godolphin Blue, and he absolutely smashes her that day. What's going on? Is it part of John O'Shea's purple patch between the 28th of December and the 15th of January? Had 23 runners for 11 winners. Absolutely flying for two weeks over Christmas. God knows what he had in his turkey. After that, the form has dropped off. Five or six starts, five or six favourites have failed. Not short to this horse on Saturday, Stu. OK, I know you love your stats. You've pulled out a few there, Mike. So interesting to see where all that's going to go. Let's get this race unfolded now. Mike is very keen to have a look. Let's go with the form to get things started for the listed Carrington. Yes, yeah, Sambro coming from a $1 million race, four wide, no cover, and Southern Lad winning so well. Light them both up. OK, Sambro, Southern Lad to get the race started, Mike. Progression, a few of these getting deeper. Yeah, this is the big question. Goulois, second up, definitely improves. Redouble, yep. fifth, sixth, seventh up in his preparation. Can taper. Sambro usually likes to freshen up. And Southern Lad coming out of that purple patch. What will they do on Saturday? All questions, Stu. Yeah, a lot of queries there for mine as well. OK, the distance, 1,400 metres. Yeah, most of them OK. Albert's been first time for a while. Might be a risk. Intuition, I think they're searching with him. He's a risk as well. OK, only two with setbacks there from the gold bars. Track conditions, who likes this? Sneaky one with Marquard down the bottom. I think South Sonic quite likes it as well. OK, so we've got Sambro and Southern Lad out in front, Mike, but it's 1,400 metres. We might get a little position in run. Yeah, redouble. Nice draw, South Sonic. Sonic nice draw. Some of them are drawn quite wide. OK, so Redouble levels up to Sambro and Southern Lad there, Mike. We've got three top Raiders. Looks a little bit messy for mine. A lot of questions we had going into the race. That hasn't really answered much for me. <laughs> Let's see if some of the value can, because I know that's the way we like to have a bet. It is the listed Carrington Stakes. And, well, we've got to look for the edge here, Mike. We've pretty much got market order in here, though, so... Geez, where are these bets coming from? Yeah, hands in the air, no idea, Stu. I've got absolutely no idea. We did this race because it was the feature, <laughs> but I'm giving zero <laughs> insight. Question on the first one, question on the second one, question on the third one, mm. which leaves me with the fourth one, even though he's the favourite and he's the fourth top rider, one of the favourites in this fourth top rider, Galwa. Each way, second up, Godolphin, 1,400 metres Ramwick. He will run a race on Saturday. OK, a messy race, but Gorwire on top, and we're not going anywhere near the $2.50 favourite. No big bets for us. <laughs> All right, let's wrap it up with race number eight, and it's an exciting sprint to end the day, over 1,100 metres, and this is an absolute trial watcher's delight, this race, because pandemic, we will see the replay in a minute, but it was ridden out to win, $2.80. We've got Sir Elton there, $3.00, obviously a boom sprinter from last uh, winter, and Josh Parr, he knows this horse inside out. Four rides on him in the last two weeks, says Adam Duggan living close to the track. We've got True Detective there, $6.50. Draws wide. A question here on the Waller Runners Fresh. Safado, $7.50. Not with Kim War anymore with the Waller Camp. They're the four under 10 bucks, Mike, but I'll tell you what, these two are absolutely doming them, dominating the market. Pandemic and Sir Elton, some quality sprinters. This really is the feature, isn't it, Stuart? It's a benchmark race, but these are seriously exciting horses that will feature in the autumn. Let's have a look at the trials and see if we can split between them. Starting with Sir Elton, he won his first start, won his second start, won his third start, and had the bias against on his fourth start when losing to Horbury on her, who is now a group two, group two winner, and he gave her four kilograms that day. Leads all the way, tough, strongly built, seems to be fit, a 
very, very likeable horse to you. Okay, and what obviously goes to the lead this day here, Michael, what are we looking for? Really strong over the concluding stages here, over the 1,000 That's meters. the thing about him, he's got early speed, he's got fire to the finish, such a rare combination, makes him such a good bet on Saturday, I think. All right, well look, that horse wasn't ridden out too far, but I'll show you one that was, Mike, that is Pandemic. Obviously a lot of trial watchers are taking a few things from this, so point is it did win, and point is Godolphin here really rode a horse out to win a trial. Yeah, it looks good to the eye, doesn't it? And it is pretty good, but like you said, Stuart is ridden. It's 1,050 metres. The time was only fair. The leader is under a stranglehold. They're giving it a big throttle down the outside. It was pretty impressive. But can he repeat that on Saturday? They have to go probably 10, 12 lengths faster than that this race on Saturday, I think. All right, yeah, look, okay. Look, so it was ridden and obviously eased down late. That's a very nice trial win, and we've obviously got many to look at in this race because all the chances are resuming, Mike. But key factors can hopefully find us a winner in the sprint. It is a good race, but we've got two dominant favourites here in the last. Pandemic and Sir Elton Well, there, but there they go. Both lit up for the full. Yeah, I had Sir Elton on, on top first, but just some of that black type three-year-old form just snuck Pandemic up. But Sir Elton is proven against older horses. I just could split, split them, Stu. All right, so the two favourites are the ones they all have to catch. They've obviously got a bit of progression, Mike, because they're coming back from spills. Yeah, this is the magic. This is the guesswork. Which has the most upside, the most progression to this preparation? Pandemic, Sir Elton. They both got it. And Safado for Waller, he can improve his prep as well. OK, the two favourites right out in front here. Distance, who's going to like the 1100 I better? They're all good. We can okay, move on. OK, we can fly through this. Do any of these two favourites like it a good track better? They're fine, I think. Pandemic probably doesn't want too much rain if a storm comes. OK, so no one's really closing the gap here, Mike, but obviously in a sprint, does one of these get a better position Yeah, they run? both get good positioning runs, but different position runs. Depends on what you want. Sir Elton leading with some pressure on the outside, so a tiny risk for him. Pandemic back on the rails, a risk for him as well, but both perfect barriers for these horses. OK, so Pandemic and Sir Elton, I mean, we looked through the odds, it looked a pretty simple race from a betting perspective, and we've got to the end of the key factors there, and we cannot we've split given you the two <laughs> favourites, Mike. Hopefully, I've got a bit of an edge there for a bet. Let's have a look now in Not the much. last, Mike, because we've got to weigh it up. It's two favourites. It doesn't always come out like that. How are we going to play this, though, Mike? Because all I can say is I love it on key factors when I see two of these favourites just clear out. I wish it was one, but which one are we going to yeah, get? Yeah, toss of the coin and 283 bucks. I guess it's better than backing a $1.95 in a rugby <laughs> league game, maybe. Take one of these That's horses. Tough. Sir Elton's the one I'm leaning towards, but I'm not going to put you off any. I saw the money come in for a place, $1.45 yep. into $1.40. You could smash the place on one of them if you wanted it. Okay. I think they'll run one too. You could Quinella as well. We'll go Sir Elton just, but it's a great race on Saturday. All right, so a few plays there, but it is Sir Elton for us in race number eight this weekend at Royal Randwick. Stick around after the break. We've got plenty more coming your way, including our $100 hot seat and, of course, our charity multi-bets. Welcome back to Key Factors, presented by theraceguide.com.au. We've had a big look at five races at Royal Randwick this weekend. Mike, plenty of winners. It's listed racing. What else have we got on the card? One more winners, big please. winners. We want to get some money. We want to be donating to charity. We want to buy these auction items, rulership. You can't trial much better than that 290. Nowhere to look. Box seat, eight bucks. CJ Blitzer, you can't get any wider than him last start. Six wide, no cover. He can improve at 650. Then the tips we talked about in the show tonight. Roman's on the value that at 23 bucks. Man of Peace on pace at seven. Helga at 260. Galois, Sir Elton at three. And Superium can win $1.95, but I want to see the yard first. OK, so a little bit of mix of value and a few favourites in there, Mike. There are the other bets. $100 hot seat time. We're into the negative. We've got to pick that up. As you said, we're doing all this for charity later in the show. What do you got here? Let's keep bucks. it short and punchy. 10 bucks, Roman Sun, 23. And then $50, Pumpkin Pie, 40 bucks Sir Elton, but only a place for pumpkin pie. She doesn't really win, does she, Stu? She doesn't, but you've made some pretty good cases here tonight on the show. Well, it's charity multi-time. Of course, we are donating our money to the fire services, so good luck to all the fireys out there this weekend, of course. Now, Mike, here we go. 2020 charity bet. We've got White Boots to place, $2.50. I can't rely on Roman Sun. I know you made some good points. Pumpkin Pie to place, $2.40. I can't believe you've sold me on this, but it's right. <laughs> Sir Elton, two favourites. You've said one's going to get a better run. That's Sir Elton we can rely on. That's 20 at $8.40. And an exacta, Helga, you've pretty much declared this one. And Well, Pumpkin, it's in everything now. Let's put them in the exacta. I like those bets, obviously. And Pumpkin Pie might just stick her yellow <laughs> nose out. So we'll put 20 bucks a win on her as well for charity. Just in case, Jim. All right, Just so there is the charity bets. Of course, a $100 hot seat as well. Head out to Royal Randwick this weekend. It's going to be a great day. Support, obviously, all the charity and the auctions that are going on this weekend. And also head to theraceguide.com.au for all your feature profiling this weekend at Royal Randwick. See you at Randwick on Saturday.